Begin by preparing the sulfurous acid. You're going to need to weigh out one gram of sodium sulfite and adding it to a small amount of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Stir it to dissolve and then add this to a large amount of deionized water. You're going to eventually make about a liter. Stir this in, rinsing the um, beaker with the sulfite in it uh, with deionized water and adding that to the larger beaker. And um, then dilute to 1,000 milliliters or one liter. Weigh out approximately five grams of the copper two chloride dihydrate. Put it in a small beaker. Wet it with deionized water, just a few milliliters, and then stir the mixture until it completely dissolves. When the copper chloride is completely dissolved in the deionized water, the solution should appear clear with no cloudiness at all. You should have determined ahead of time what the stoichiometric amount of sodium sulfite would be. You are going to use approximately twice this, but no more than twice. You're going to add about 25 to 30 milliliters of water and again stir until it completely dissolves. Prepare the uh, copper 1 chloride. You will need to mix the two solutions by pouring the copper 2 chloride into the sodium sulfate. Initially it will turn brown, but as you keep stirring, it will begin to lose its color and you will have a white precipitate with a pale green solution. Take the solution stirring up the uh, precipitate into the uh, supernatant fluid and pour it into your uh, acid solution that you have prepared. Stir this um, and make sure that you rinse out the beaker and add that to the um, larger beaker so that you have quantitatively transferred your material. Then allow the solution to settle your product should be white, but if you let it sit for 10 to 20 minutes, it will turn blue. You don't want this to happen. And if you add more sodium sulfite, it will turn green. A good quality product will be white and remain white even for a long period of time. The three bottles to the right are uh, samples from two years ago. Uh, so the one that is second from the left has maintained a very white color. Uh, the others were fairly white to begin with and have slowly started to turn a pale green. You can decant the supernatant fluid into the sink. Before you begin filtration, have your rinses ready to go. It's fine to have all of the 10 milliliter portions in one container. So I have 30 milliliters of ethanol in the first beaker, and then I have uh, 40 milliliters of acetic acid in the second. And then I've left the ether in the uh, graduated cylinder and I've capped it so that it doesn't evaporate because it's very volatile. Remember to swirl the mixture of the solid and the liquid so that you can pour the solid out. You will need to do this in several portions as the fluid drains through the filter. Once you have transferred all of the solid, make sure that you rinse out the beaker by um, using the sulfurous acid to wash down the sides. Add the washes in about 10 milliliters at a time. You don't need to be exact, just pour a small portion. Don't quite let the, all of the fluid from the previous wash go through the uh, funnel before you add the next uh, wash, and that way your 
solid never gets quite dry until you've gotten to the last washing. Before you do your last washing with the ether, you will need to empty the filter flask. The filtrate from the first two washings can go down the drain, but the ether should not. Do your final washing in four portions of about 10 milliliters of the ethanol. Once you are done, take the filtrate to the hood and dispose of it in the container in the hood. After your final rinsing, take a watch glass and place it over the top of the centered glass funnel to keep the ether on top of the copper one chloride and to keep air from getting in. Adding too much sulfite can cause the uh, copper one to disproportionate, forming the brownish copper you see here along with the greenish tinge of the copper two. Label a vial with the name of the chemical, your name and the date. Weigh the vial with the lid on. If nitrogen is available, make sure that you have nitrogen in the glass tube and then transfer your product to the vial. The product should be fairly dry at this point. Once you have finished transferring, recap the bottle quickly. Reweigh the bottle and determine the percent yield.